Big money is driving everything. Wall Street is driving everything. And that was perfectly on display yesterday during stimulus coronavirus testimony in front of Congress yesterday as both Secretary Mnuchin and Treasure and, uh, and Federal, Federal Reserve Chief Jerome Powell were grilled. In fact, they got some pretty heated questions yesterday from members of the committee going after them on questions about health care, city and state governments going bankrupt. Uh, are banks getting bailed out? Um, the list went on and on. Do we need additional stimulus? But the way I saw it at a 30,000 foot level was let me give you my statements at the beginning before I take questions, and let me tell you how well I think Wall Street is doing. That's basically what it was. Hey, jobs numbers are down to about you know 8.4% or so, which is a fake number, and Wall Street's doing pretty good. Even yesterday, the S&P went up again just fine. After a day where it went down 500 points, it's back. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. Garbage. But it was all of these, you know, rich white guys being able to tell you how everything is fine because Wall Street's doing fine. The housing sector's doing fine. Hiring is coming back. Very little discussion, though, about that K-shaped recovery, the people at the very bottom. There were a few pointed questions about health care and other things that I want to bring to you today. I watched the whole thing and I pulled out some, some interesting moments that I want to share with you. A couple stood out to me, notably health care. And how, of course, the Trump administration has tried to roll back Obamacare, which Obamacare is a right-wing, flawed health care program, okay? It's been flawed from the beginning. It was, you know, Mitt Romney created that Massachusetts conservative-approved health care plan. It's, it's, it's fairly weak. Nevertheless, during a pandemic where people with pre-existing conditions need coverage and people who lost their jobs need health care, is this now the time, Trump administration, to roll back parts of Obamacare in order to make sure more people don't have access to coverage? You know why? Because Wall Street doesn't like it. Wall Street doesn't like it. But 67% of Americans like having health care coverage. And that's why I think we need universal basic health care in this country. We need a single payer Medicare for all system in this country. It's ridiculous that we look like third world nation compared to these other nations that have a, a fantastic healthcare system in place to take care of people no matter what happens. And we can't do it. The richest country in the world. Give me a break. Give me a break. Come on, man. Yeah, Joe. I know you said, come on, man. But hey, you had a chance at the DNC. Democrats had a chance also. Democrats had a chance to differentiate themselves, to bring in some of those Bernie Sanders supporters and to say, we want health care for all. We're not going to stand it anymore. Universal uh, health care for all, Medicare for all, single payer system. We're done fooling around. How many millions of Americans would have said, yes, sign me up for that. I'm on board. Instead, they're bought and sold by corporations, Democrats and Republicans. It's basically one big party. And you have to look outside of that system to get any kind of answers. But Democrats tried yesterday during this committee hearing to try to get some answers about health care, to try to get some answers about stimulus, to try to get answers about state and local governments going bankrupt. Here are a few moments yesterday. I want to re uh, I'm going to play for you this question, which came from uh, Representative Joyce uh, Beatty. Um, and well, I'll just play it and we'll, we'll comment next. In many cases, allowed them to keep their health care. Okay, earlier this year, the Trump administration submitted a brief to the Supreme Court urging them to overturn the Affordable Care Act, which would roughly strip 20 million Americans of their health care in the midst of this historic pandemic that has already cost the lives of, we know uh, today, more than 200,000 Americans, including stripping uh, protection for a pre-existing condition, kicking many of our younger uh, adults off their plans, we're also hearing now about how great their numbers are. I've been in Congress for eight years and I have voted against it a dozen of times. Uh, Chairman Powell, what effect would stripping 20 million Americans of their health care in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic do to the economy? I wouldn't want to comment on a particular uh, Supreme Court case, but as you mentioned, health care is an important um, part of the support system well, that people need. Way. Excuse me, let me say it this way, uh, Mr. Chairman. Do you think 
stripping health care or not having health care uh, would be bad for the economy. As you started with, I, I think that um, having, uh, having health care coverage is an important basis for people to, to go to work. It's one of the reasons people do work, and it helps you, uh, you know, importantly, to continue would in your you, workplace. Would you say that's a yes? Then would you say that's a yes that... Yeah. Answer the question. <laughs> I'm sorry, if someone comes to me and says, Clayton, do you think that health care, health care coverage and people being healthy is good for our economy and for people to be able to return to work. What do you think, Clayton? Well, um, I want to be careful here because uh, I don't want to comment about anything that, uh, you know, uh, but is it, spit it out, Junior. The answer is yes. It's like in Ghostbusters, you know? When someone asks you, when someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. Otherwise, Zool is going to, you know, blow you up. Yes, the answer is yes. If our nation had nutritious school lunches for kids instead of processed crap, if we had preventative med medicine in place, if we weren't the fattest country in the world back and forth with Mexico on a regular basis, if we didn't have the types of things in place that our government should have in place, we would be much healthier. The answer is yes, healthcare is important. The reason that so many people have been dying of coronavirus is because they, a lot of them had pre-existing conditions, underlying health issues before. Why is a 28-year-old woman un tragically dying from coronavirus? Because she's got diabetes. It exacerbates other conditions. So yeah, the answer is yes, there is no, there is no vacillating on that answer. Having health care would certainly be a plus or a positive to having people. I mean, come on, 200 million people have died. Look at the numbers. If I look at African Americans making up 13 percent of the population, but having almost 30 some percent positive results, 24 percent dying. Uh, don't you think health care plays into keeping people healthy and the economy? Yes, I do. Thank you. Was that so hard? <laughs> so the why are, why is the Trump administration trying to get people off of health care? Why do we not have a stimulus plan that is able to provide some sort of universal basic health care for the foreseeable future? Here's an opportunity. This is what Joe Biden should be talking about. He should be out on the if you know if, if Democrats really wanted to win this election and not maybe win it by the skin of their teeth or get totally slammed by Trump again because we don't see things happening and we don't see things coming get railroaded again. Democrats could actually get out on the campaign trail and actually talk about the big issues that matter: health care, universal basic income, some sort of thing that keeps some sort of a platform, a program that keeps the, the you know Americans who are 30 million Americans who are out of work, one in 10 households right now can't afford to put food on the table. They're going hungry. One in 10 families. How is this America? But instead, Democrats are bought and sold by corporations as well as Republicans are. And they don't want to talk about this stuff. It's going to be more of the same, unfortunately. There were some other interesting questions yesterday. Uh, let's see. We've had uh, Representative Rashida Tlaib wanted to ask specifically about whether or not we're going to see additional stimulus. Ask Secretary Mnuchin about this, about direct stimulus checks. Like, where are we, guys? What you must understand, though, I think it's kind of ironic, and it's a little, um, uh, I don't want to say hypocritical. Well, it's the House, so it's not terribly hypocritical. But here they are asking these guys about stimulus. They've been saying we, we want additional stimulus for a while. The House passed a stimulus bill that's been sitting there, and the Senate has no in interest at all in passing additional stimulus. So it is a little interesting to hear them ask this question again and again and again. It's like a broken record at this point. But here's their response. I really would appreciate that. Secretary Mnuchin, um, we got to prevent an economic collapse, right? I mean, this is a huge issue, and this is probably even deeper than even what the recession that we went through. Yes or no, do you believe another stimulus check could help stabilize the economy? I do. However, you've been on record for not supporting the economic passage uh, package that we passed in May that included another round of stimulus checks for millions of Americans. 
um, that would, you know, that are right now unable to afford their rent and so forth. Can you explain what your position there is? Because um, I think the American people are a little confused. Does the administration support a $1,200 another stimulus payment? The administration does support another stimulus payment. So, but you're willing to go ahead and support it within the Heroes Act that payment, but and push back on what we, what I call, let it, let them go bankrupt bill that the Senate has proposed. Let me just say I take great pride that the the last two bills we did passed with overwhelming bipartisan support. Mm -hmm. We obviously can't pass a bill in the Senate without bipartisan support. And uh, our job is to continue to work with Congress to try to get additional help to the American public. I think you need to be very clear with the senators, Secretary, really clear, Treasurer, that direct payment to individuals is critical to preventing the economic collapse in our country. So, of course, they're going to be meeting with the Senate Banking Committee today. And so that's what she was referring to. Hey, when you meet with the senators, I want you to please tell them that we need another stimulus check. They're not going to listen because they don't care. Big businesses already got their bailout money, and those are their biggest donors. There's a Supreme Court battle that's now going to polarize the nation, and that's, it's going to divide us across conservative lines against liberal lines, and that's it. And if you are a senator in Kentucky, even though you're a terrible senator like Mitch McConnell, You've gotten a conservative justice on that Supreme Court. That's what his legacy is going to be. That's all we care about as a, you know, as a voter. That's all we care about. So make no mistake about it. I mean, I, I just don't see them passing anything. I, I, I don't, not for months. I thought it was pretty telling though last night, we had breaking news here where we covered this, where one of the representatives pressed Chairman Powell on the issue of stimulus and specifically asked him the question about a price tag. I don't know how many, how many of you, by the way, watched our live show last night during the, during the testimony, we were here. Where were you? Probably working, living your day and living your, having a family. Um, one of the questions that he asked him, it was, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty telling. He was asking him, Hey, you guys have this federal, this forecast that you told us about last week from the federal reserve. You gave us this forecast telling us there's going to be clouds in the sky and rain on Thursday, basically. And you said we needed additional stimulus. Well, what was that number based on? Is it 1 trillion, 1.5 trillion, 2 trillion? What's the number based on? He couldn't answer it. Well, what, what are you smoking then over there at the Federal Reserve? This big central bank that's not actually part of our government that runs the show, runs everything. Wall Street's fine, and we can continue to pour as much money as we want into those guys. They're going to be fine. But the American people, 9 million of which still don't even have their stimulus checks because we couldn't get it out on time. And one of the other questions that I thought was pretty interesting was uh, this question at the very beginning here from, uh, as Fed Chief Jerome Powell answered about big banks. I'll play it again because this is on record now. Were the big banks, are the big banks getting a bailout in this? The question to you is simple. Has there been a bailout for banks during COVID-19? No, I wouldn't say that there has been. No, I wouldn't say that there has been. Thank you, Frank Grimes, for your kind super chat. Keep doing what you do, Clayton. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I will keep talent like it is. You're not going to see this on MSNBC. You're not going to see it on Fox. You're not going to see it on the big mainstream media news channels. You're not going to see it on cable news. There's one party, and it's Wall Street. It's money. And, you know, they try to paint it as red and blue. So if you're on MSNBC, you're red, or you're blue. If you're on Fox, you're red, and we, that's it. That's the only discussion we have, right? Corporate overlords running everything. They're fine. They're happy. They've made their money. They're getting their bailout funds and look at the front page of the, Wall the Washington Post today and how this pen you know, Pentagon money that was supposed to be set aside for masks and swabs and PPE at the hospitals is used for en jet engine parts because the Pentagon just decided to funnel it over to uh, you know, other defense contractors. And who's going to do anything about it? No one. And the Trump administration looked the other way. 
fine. Oh, you mean John, my friend, uh, one of our defense contractors who donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to my campaign, just got another a couple hundred thousand dollars in funding or a couple million because of this PPP program and because of the uh, pandemic money? Oh, that's fine. He's a donor. He donated money to our campaign. Garbage. Garbage. Come on, man. It's true. It's true, Joe. But you, you, you've you been happy to take money also, Joe. You've been happy to take money from Mike Bloomberg, and you're happy to take endorsements from Rick Snyder up there in Michigan who literally poisoned his people. There's enough evidence to suggest that, you know, in Flint, Michigan, he gives you an endorsement and you tweet about it. Come on, man. This is what we're dealing with right now. Come on, man. Imagine if Wall Street crashes. If Wall Street crashes, that's when we'll get a stimulus. That's when we'll, I said it, I said it last time. My wife said, you know, what, do you, what did you, my wife said, you know, what did you make of the, the testimony yesterday from the Fed chief and Treasury Secretary? What was your take on that, honey? And I said, you know what my take was? My take is that, well, number one, we're not going to see another stimulus until Wall Street starts taking a dump. If Wall Street starts hurting and those big money donors start making phone calls to their senators that they've donated millions of dollars to over the years, hey, Mitch McConnell, yeah, this is John, remember? I run Boeing. Yeah, um, we've got a problem. That's when we'll see a stimulus.